Hi, this is for why we at and how we might model this detail on I think it's a lightsaber. So it is an interesting shape. You have this kind of cylindrical form you have, which has like a nice curved uh, corner, like this bell right here. But simultaneously, it also is got a cutout that is matching that bevel. So how do you do both at the same time? And really, I just want you to think of this as like a giant cylinder. Um, and these shapes cut out of it are just Booleans. So I'm actually going to start with a box, not a cylinder. And I'm just going to scale this up and make it a little bit bigger. Something like that. And I'm going to bevel this. And this is really, you can smooth this out, put as many subdivisions as you want, smooth that to taste, so something like that. Next, I'm gonna create a cylinder. I'm just gonna drag this up, scale it, hold J to snap 90 degrees. Okay, something like this. I'm going to go into the side view here and I'm just gonna turn on wireframe so I can see. And let's scale it up a little bit more, okay? And really what you wanna do is you wanna line up the midline of this cylinder with the top edge of the primary one. And I'm just gonna hold V to snap. So right now it's completely flush with the very top of that bevel. I'm going to scale it so that the very bottom of the cylinder reaches roughly the, the very beginning, the first line of the beginning of the bevel. And notice that in the, if you want to be super accurate, you notice that like right here, it's flat. It's actually not, uh, the apex of the cutout is not the peak right here. It's actually like flat. So if I wanted to be accurate, it would actually be more like rotated like this. But before we rotate it, we want to determine how many sides of the cylinder we need. Um, the challenge is, if you if you may or not may not notice, um, the challenge is that there's a lot more horizontal lines here than we have spokes on this cylinder. We need a little bit more resolution, so I'm just going to increase it to uh, maybe 28. Uh, that didn't quite help, but you'll see here in a second. Um, now that I know how many sides I have, I can rotate this uh, the perfect amount to, to to make it flat. So this is where we bust out the calculator. We're gonna do 360 degrees divided by 28 sides. That gives us 12.8, and I'm gonna divide that by two because we're, we don't wanna do a full turn, we just wanna do a half turn. So you can actually just copy this exact number, and I'm gonna rotate it. Uh, what axis is this? This is the Y axis, so I'm just gonna pump that in right there. So now it rotated. You can see now the bottom here is completely flat. It's probably not mathematically perfect, but it's good enough. And now that we have like a little bit more of a gap, we can actually increase, actually first I'm just gonna freeze transformation. I'm gonna increase the scale just so that it matches perfectly like that, okay? And next I'm going to extend the lines here so that it shoots past the box. And now this is the real trick. You wanna insert edge, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. You wanna insert edge loops so that it lines up horizontally with each one of these spokes. Like each one of these spokes on this cylinder is gonna have its own horizontal line. So I'm just gonna do an insert edge loop and you can just eyeball this. It doesn't actually have to be perfect because we're gonna clean it up after. So something like this. Just line it up, line it up. Now you notice, like I said, there's a lot more resolution horizontally than on my sphere here. So I actually wanna insert one edge loop right here on the cylinder. But instead of punching in a new value, I just want to, I'm just gonna insert edge loop and hold shift. That, in, that adds an edge loop with flow on. So something like that. Which side did, okay, this, I think I did it. Which face did I do it on? This one right here, so on the other side, I have to do that too. Okay, so I added another edge loop. And because I have another point right here, right there, I know that we have to insert another edge loop on the primary, roughly, actually, I don't know, did I get that right? Something like that, okay? So now we have perfect amount. So now we can delete unnecessary edges. Let me get out of transparency mode here so you can see. So we have this one, this one, we don't need this line, we don't need this line. Again, and I'm, I'm looking at where it intersects the spokes. Um, this one could actually be a little higher up, so I'm just gonna add that. Okay, so let's try it again. So we're gonna select this edge, this edge, this edge, this one, and again, these are all points that are not intersecting with the spokes. Something like that. Let's leave it like this for now. And I'm just gonna delete those. Okay, so now I've got my base shape, I've got my cutout shape, and I'm just gonna go up to Mesh, Booleans, Difference. All right, and now you can see that we have it perfectly lined up horizontally and along the other axis. Now I'm just gonna hit this with a, a merge, merge, merge vertices, something like that. Maybe increase the threshold a little bit. Can see a, a little bit of flickering so that means that stuff is happening right 
And it's always a good practice to just check it. Whenever you do a Boolean, you always want to check for um, n-gons. So we'll just do select faces with more than four sides, hit apply. And you can see there's like a little bit of cleanup that we need to do, which is completely fine. So right here, we're just going to target weld these spots. And you know, you can be more accurate than I am, but that's essentially all you need to do. Right here, let me just hide the grid so it's a little easier to see. This is a little bit of a mess. So let's add an insert edge loop, but we want it perfectly in the middle. So I'm just going to make it a multiple edge loops. Click right here, click right here so that we have like a midline. Now we need a cut for this one. So I'm just going to hold control shift and control shift with the cut tool. What that allows you to do is a perfect 90 degree line. It's not going to be off. So something like that. Okay, now I'm just going to delete this edge. Oh, not yet. All right, so next what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this half because I only want to clean up one half at a time. Okay. Looks like I deleted a face here. I'm just going to bridge that. Okay, and it looks like we might need another face right here, another cut right here. Okay, we can actually delete this face because I'm, you're gonna see what I'm gonna do here in a second. Okay, so this is the shape that we want. Let's just hit it with another cleanup. Make sure that there's no end gons. There's one more we missed. Okay, so right here, we're gonna need to start adding some edge loops. I'm just gonna do relative. like this. And then what you can do to straighten this is just select all the pieces, scale it along the X axis and just snap it something like that. And like that, hit it with another one. Okay. Now we have, we finally have a clean shape. Now what you need to do is you need to mirror it. So we're just going to take this, edit duplicate special. I'm just going to reset the settings. We're gonna do a copy. What axis is this? Is the Z axis. So negative one on Z axis. Duplicate special. Gonna take that, combine it. Moving the pivot to the other side because we wanna flip it. But first I'm gonna hit this whole thing with a merge. Okay. Then next we're gonna duplicate it special on the X axis this time. Okay, something like that. Combine it, merge this part here. All right, now we've got a pretty good looking shape. We've already accomplished like the solution, so you can actually stop watching, but I'm just gonna show you how you make the, the circular part uh, if, you, if you didn't know how to do that. Now I'm going to select all of the, the verts on the outsides here, because I wanna make this a little bit thinner. So bring it in, you know, something like that, right? And what I'm going to do here is hit it with a freeze transformation, delete history. Let's just, again, just checking for uh, end gons, no end gons. We have a clean shape here. This is good. So now we're going to duplicate special or actually I'm going to move the pivot to the opposite side. I'm just going to hit control D to duplicate and then I'm going to move it and we're going to capture this value. So it moves negative 604 or whatever. Uh, units. So we're going to go here to duplicate special. I'm just going to reset settings again. We want to translate uh, what axis on the Z axis. We want to paste that value that we moved it and how many copies. Let's say we want 24 copies. So we already have two. So let's make that 22 copies. So we have, oh, so you see when this happens, right? Your camera view is uh, needs more distance. So I'm just going to go to clip plane, add a couple zeros to that. It's still a little rough. So we're going to add, uh, we're actually going to change the near plane value as well. So now we have um, 24 of these objects. We're going to combine this, select all the verts here. Okay. And now this is exactly what we want. We want to go to deform nonlinear and bend. I'm going to rotate this hit J again. Okay. And now when you go to the channel box, it's able to curve, but it's curving in the wrong direction. So you actually need to rotate the bend tool itself. So I'm hitting the rotate. I'm holding J again to snap just 90 degrees. 
and it might take a little trial and error but look see that's that's what we want and if you pump in 180 to here you get a perfect cylinder we're going to delete history we've accomplished the uh, bend deformer is gone now we're going to hit this one more time with a merge vertice and that is how you get your shape and then from here you can do whatever you want with it right you can um you know scale it whatever whatever you're, whatever you're trying to accomplish all right um hope that helps